Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking pine cones. How do they work? Well, it's been a few months since the last video in this series, so I thought it was time to clear the decks and address some of the funnier creationist arguments that I've heard recently, but not yet talked about in the How to Argue with a Creationist series. One of my favorites that's been cropping up a lot lately is the claim that science changes all the time, but creationism is always the same. The implication here is that if we just wait long enough, maybe something will be found that will overturn evolution, or the fact that new discoveries change some aspect of the timeline means that the theory is in doubt. Here's how to handle this one. First off, you can throw a little jab at them like this. Well, of course creationism doesn't change. It's based on belief and not on evidence. If it changed at all, it would no longer be creationism by definition. Then, after they're done scratching their heads at that one, you can really make them nervous. Pull out a tape measure and say, Okay, let's measure it. Before they run away thinking you're about to challenge them to a sword fight, you can explain why measurement is so important to finding truth. Throughout time, science has been applied to all kinds of fields, through devices that enable us to look further into space or look more closely at tiny structures in a cell. The theories, however, are often ahead of the measuring instruments. In Columbus's time, there wasn't exactly an accepted way that people knew to measure the curvature of the Earth. So he had to go ahead and prove it, whereas now we can take a picture from any satellite at a moment's notice. In Darwin's day, we were still about a hundred years from discovering DNA. So he proposed the mechanism for evolution, but could not actually see what was responsible for it, because microscopes weren't advanced enough yet. Then, over 50 years ago, once microscopes were good enough and we knew where to look, DNA was found. Through experimentation, we confirmed that it was, in fact, the mechanism for heredity. And over the decades, we've learned the details. That particular search is over. There are always nuances to be found, of course, but we're not going to rediscover that the world's species were sprinkled like pixie dust from the sky any more than that we're going to rediscover that the Earth is flat, or find out that Pluto isn't really there after all. I understand that in the world of creationism, hope truly springs eternal, but it just has never worked that way, and I hate to see people get their hopes up needlessly. While we're on the subject of discovery, let's talk Darwin for a second. Many creationists love to talk about Darwin, as if we would be offended that they would dare to criticize him. They try to say all kinds of things about him that may or may not have been true in order to somehow poke holes in evolution by proxy. Darwin married his cousin. Didn't Darwin renounce evolution on his deathbed? Darwin liked black licorice. Think about it. It's twisted. There are a couple ways that you can address this argument. You could very easily and correctly say that science doesn't work like religion. There are no science apostles that ever claim to be perfect, and there's no requirement that any scientist can never be wrong in order for some of what they said to be true. Additionally, I know this may surprise a lot of people, but you can also diffuse them by saying, you know where our modern understanding of evolution would have been without Darwin? Almost exactly where it is now. Darwin just happened to be first, but other scientists during that era were studying similar things to what Darwin was studying. They just hadn't written a book yet, or hadn't put together all the pieces before Darwin did. Thinking creationism would have been safe in 2010 if Darwin hadn't existed is like thinking people in the year 2150 would have never heard the lamest creationist arguments if not for Kirk Cameron. And all through the fossil record and life, we don't find one of these. A crocoduck. There's just nothing like it.